All right, so we have to start with the myocardial cell. And inside this myocardial cell, we have a resting membrane potential of minus 90 millimoles. Resting membrane potential. Okay. All right, inside the cell, we also have an ion. Potassium likes to live on the inside, right? Okay. And then once the SA node, which is the what? Sinoatrial node, once it's stimulated, it actually allows sodium to start leaking into the cell. So sodium will start leaking into the cell. As we add this positive ion into the minus 90 millivolt uh, environment of the myocardial cell, that starts to become more positive until it hits minus 70 millivolts. Minus 70 millivolts, okay? <clears throat> now, once it hits minus 70 millivolts, which is the what? Threshold potential, right? Threshold potential. Once it hits that, it opens fast gated voltage channels, fast gated sodium channels, which allows sodium to do what? Diffuse. Diffusion. All right. Which causes the internal environment to become more positive very rapidly, up to plus 10 millivolts. Okay. Now, becoming less, uh, less away from zero, this is called polar, right? So the further away from zero are, the more polar you are. Mm -hmm. All right. So as I bring it back up, we actually depolarize. Polarization is re referenced as positive, yes? Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's coming up, we're coming to depolarize. All right, once we hit plus 10, the sodium channel shut off. And these other channels open. We have calcium. swapping. Now, potassium's leaving, calcium's coming in, and we end up with this plateau phase, which is voltage, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't change because we have this goes in and goes out stuff. So potassium is leaving, leaving, and then calcium channels shut off, and then potassium continues to leave, and we end up going back to what? Repolarization. Polarization. Right? We're putting it back down to zero. Now, at this point, what has to occur here? ion pump to put those ions back where they go all right now looking at this this is what this is representative as a what what is this tissue a myocardial. 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 cell and this is can be referenced as what depolarization repole right mm -hmm. okay also Of information there, right? As far as what's happening in uh, what's in just this one picture. Now, as sodium starts to dump into the cell, we wash the inside of the cell with sodium, right? Well, each myocardial cell 
which is connected or communicates with the next cell through gap junction. Gap junction. Gap junction, okay? And that's also the intercalated discs. Okay. So the intercalated disc, right? And that, of course, stimulates the next cell, and then it stimulates the next cell, so on and so forth, right? And that's how we get our sensation. stimulated it starts to release communication right this starts to occur so we end up with a wave of what a wave of what depolarization right so remember we have to go through the depolarization first which is bringing it back up towards zero. Yes. So we end up with a wave of depolarization. Now, <clears throat> as we look at myocardial tissue as a whole, we have cells. And these are the cells, right? And these little circular things here are the cells. And each one of them is going through what? Depolarization, right, in a direction. In a direction. And that's how we get our vectors, okay? Now, the direction of depolarization has to do with how it's communicating and where it's stimulated from. If the SA node was over here, it would stimulate this way, okay? So we'd end up with a vector that was up and to the left. But it's not, it's up, it's in the right atrium, in the atrial wall. So the stimulation is down and to the left. Yes? Yes. Okay. So with all that being said, we end up with a vector. Remember vectors? They are direction and amplitude. And, and it's a wave of what? Depolarization. Depolarization, so it's positive. Okay, so it's positive. Now that positive is down down and to the left, okay, down and to the left. All right, and then we have, remember this is fibrous tissue ring, here's the cardiac skeleton, gives the heart some structure, it's where the valves are located. This is what side heart? What is, what side heart right is it? Right side, right. And this is the left side, so yeah. this is what side going to what? Going to what? The lungs. The lungs. Cardiac ring or the cardiac skeleton, annulus, annulus fibers. So this is what? What space is this? Right. Right. Left. Left. All right. So we end up with that, and of course, as this wave of depolarization comes down, it hits this cardiac annulus fibers, and it cannot pass isolation. So the only place it can go through is the AV node. Alright. So the AV node the AV node is not only 
a gatekeeper is also a time delay. And the time delay is there because we need to do what? We need to allow the what to do what? We need to allow the atrium to finish going through what? Depolarization. Right? So this has to finish before this signal continues on down through that tissue there. Okay, so AV node, what makes it a time delay? <coughs> So we have decreased gap junction, right? uh, smaller cells, <clears throat> what else? Okay, so they're 90 degrees away from each other. And the biggest thing is minus 60 resting membrane potential. Now, as we talked about that before, the resting membrane potential, the resting membrane potential, right? Um, the most important thing about the resting membrane potential is that it is less. It is reduced from, say, this, or as we talked about, the Purkinje system is smaller than that. So as something is highly or more polarized further away from zero, it is a stronger attractant, in other words, like a magnet. Okay, so something is more polarized that actually will pull harder. So you can see that minus 90 millivolts will pull these sodium and calcium ions much harder than something that is minus 60. Okay? So we actually speed up that process by uh, being more polar. So this, in this case, it slows it down because it's less polar. Does that make sense? Okay? So that's probably the biggest deal for why this is a time delay and, of course, the, the, the rest of them. As it comes, the signal comes through, it can't come shoot straight through. It's got to go through all the cells until it can stop. Okay, so it slows it down as it comes through so that that atria can finish going through depolarization. So that's the AV node. So this ventricle, or the atrium, sorry, the atrium's going through depolarization, this vector is the very first electrical signal, right? Electrical event. The next is the AV node, which is an electrical event. Okay. We'll describe that in just a minute. Okay. Next we have, remember this is a annulus fibers, is a fibrous rings. And then we have So this is what ventricle? Right. right. All right. So we have once we get through the AV node, we come down into the upper portion of the what? Interventricular septum. Right.
So remember the fiber sleeve continues on down and then on the on the left side. So this is called what up here? The bundle of his. This is the bundle of his. This is the what? left and right bundle branch. So from the left bundle branch, there's openings in the sleeve down here at the bottom that allow the wave of depolarization to begin and start, and start, get that clean there, and start, and depolarize, coming back up the ventricle, so we stimulate up with a, a, a vector which way? Up into the up, up into the right. Up into the right. And that's a wave of what? Depolarization. And depolarization up into the right. Okay. Now let's real quickly. We have system let's talk about that so this Purkinje system is what we call very fast uh, because it has that it's much faster to send the signal through much larger cells with increased gap junctions, right? It just kind of makes common sense as we increase the number of gap junctions through there, that signal can jet through this material. Now, why do we need increased conduction speed through the ventricular system? Because we want the ventricles to contract primarily at the same time as you turn your light on. So we need this to speed up here, okay? We need it to speed up so that we can get the ventricles to contract or go through what process? Systole. 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 Okay? Systolic. Okay? All right, so we need that to speed up so that kind of occurs at the same, same time. All right? All right, now, uh, we said that we did the up and to the right for basoventricular depolarization. EVD, right? Not underwear. Right? Basoventricular depolarization. Okay, now we have we have to continue the stimulation or the action potential. We have to have the Purkinje system. depolarization that occurs Primarily here. So remember, we talked about this being regular myocardial tissue, yes? Yes. Okay. 
So this regular myocardial tissue is what we said, moderate speed, right? Yes. Moderate speed. Okay, moderate speed of depolarization. Your Kenji system is very fast. Okay. <clears throat> this is uh, what we call major myocardial depolarization. Okay, that's the So we had the Purkinje system is located where in this myocardial myocardial. Okay, so this is the subendocardial myocardial. Okay, so if you need me to write, you need me to write that out. The subendocardial myocardial. This is right here. tissue, the very internal tissue is called the what? The superficial layer is called the layer. No, not out here. Yeah. Endo. Endocardium. Yeah. Okay, that's the layer on the inside. So right below that layer is the subendocardial myocardium. So it's just muscle cells. It's just describing its location, which is uh, it's actually more superficial, but it actually is underneath the endocardium. Of course, this one's called the what? Subpericardium. So remember, we have two layers to this pericardium. We have the uh, visceral layer and the sac, which is the parietal of the pericardium. So this is subpericardial. So we end up with a vector because uh, remember that we have increased increased tissue size gives us what? tissue to have, the larger the vector is. Okay, and what do we say about the ventricle, left side compared to the right side? It's what? About three times as big. So when we do dissections on the cow hearts, or when you look at the cow hearts today, or you already have, you will definitely see a thicker, thicker tissue on the left as compared to the right. Of course, why? One has to go to the body, right? systemic circulation device pulmonary. Okay. All right, so we end up with this depolarization continuing around. So this is major myocardial depolarization, and this is, what is this one up here is called? Basolateral. Right, so this is basolateral. All right, so then we have, we finished that. We finished that process. Then what happens to this, what has happened to this tissue? Once we've gone through depolarization, what, where are we at now with this ventric ventricular cells, the myocardial cells? We are what? Depolarized. What, someone said it. Depolarized. Which is complete ventricular depolarization. Complete ventricular depolarization. Complete, complete depolarization. So all the myocardial cells in the ventricular system are depolarized. Okay. <clears throat> Next.
next we have to talk about repolarization. And repolarization occurs from the outside in. Remember, the heart has to go through systole, which is contraction, where blood cannot perfuse the heart. So as it goes through diastole, which is rest, then the blood starts to flow again, and it flows from the outside in. And that, of course, will allow it to start going through the process of repolarization. So we end up with a vector opposite. Remember, the largest portion of this tissue is in this ventricle or in this side, right? So we end up with a vector of repolarization, which is what? Negative, back up and to the right. Back up and to the right. Okay, and that is what? Major myocardial repolarization vector. Okay. Major myocardial repolarization up and to the right. Okay. So the first thing that we have is atrial depolarization. Uh, remember it's through myocardium, right? Regular myocardium tissue, nothing special about the tissue. <coughs> so it's, it's, it's moderate speed, right? Moderate speed tissue, nothing special about the cells. They're just regular old myocardial cells, right? It is a wave of depolarization that is down and to the left. Remember, we put our leads here. This is the person with the EKG or the galvanometers leads negative up on the right arm, positive down on the left leg, okay? So then we have a wave of depolarization down and to the left, so a positive in the positive direction at moderate speed gives us a moderate trace, and this is called what? Next thing that we go through is what? Okay, so the isoelectric trace of the AV node, the time delay, the gatekeeper, right? Okay, so the time delay. Now that time delay, remember, this is very small cells. It's a very small piece of tissue. Remember, the more tissue they have, the bigger the vector. Uh, this actually is so small that the galvanometer can't pick it up. So we end up with a period of isoelectricity, which is this right here, which <coughs> don't relate directly to the AV node. Okay, the AV node. All right, so next, once we pass through the AV node, we pass through the bundle of his, the left and right bundle branch. The next electrical event is Vasoventricular depolarization, which is up and to the right, <coughs> up and to the right. It is Purkinje system, so it's very fast. very fast, very fast, and it's a positive in the negative direction. Yes, because it's coming back up the interventricular septum. So we end up with a negative 
nasoventricular depolarization, and this is called what? Next is major myocardial depolarization, which is a positive depolarization down and to the left through Purkinje system, so it's very fast. The positive in the positive direction gives us a very sharp, very fast trace, and that's what? Next we have basolateral depolarization, basolateral depolarization up and to the right, the right in the positive direction. It's still Purkinje system, so it's very fast. So we end up with this, which is what? Yes. Okay. Now we have complete. Cardial depolarization, right? Now, why is this isoelectric? Remember, this is zero volts. This is positive voltage. This is negative voltage. So, why do we have isoelectric here? These, all the cells in here are completely depolarized, so they just sit there. Everybody's happy, depolarized, and waiting. Okay, so the entire ventricular system is depolarized. All right, so we end up with this period of isoelectricity. Okay, so this is major myocardial depolarization or complete ventricular depolarization. And then next we have we have this is what T, which is what major myocardial repolarization, okay, which is up and to the right for reasons we talked about before. It starts from the outside, works its way back in. Is it Purkinje system? No. No, it's regular myocardial tissue, which is moderate. moderate speed. So moderate speed. My green is about half of, of repolarization, right? So it's negative, up and right. So negative in the negative direction is a positive of moderate speed tissue. Okay, and this relates to Myocardial repolarization. Okay, major myocardial repolarization. Okay, so everyone should be able to look at this sine wave or the sin the sinus rhythm and describe each of the sections as it relates to what's happening in the heart. Uh, let's do R. Okay, so P P is what? Atrial. Okay. Agreed. A V node. Yes. Isoelectric. Q is.
then isoelectric. T and that as well. Major myocardial reforestation. Major myocardial reforestation. Okay. How about the topic? So let's talk about Okay, so this is this is called the what? P is called the what? in the traces this is not seen okay this is always seen so what they'll call this the PR segment but it starts the time measured is to the next mark okay so they call it the PR segment okay then this QRS is called the what could be the QRS could be a wave right so Q this on the end here, which is what? Just like that P wave, this is T wave. Okay. All right, and of course you have your, the one segment, you have the ST segment, ST segment. This thing called the uh, from here to here. Okay, this is called the, the QT interval. Right? Right, that's from Q all the way to the end of T. Okay, and the reason that's significant is because this right here is where you're going to get S1, and this is where you get S2. Okay, S1. Look at the thing, we'll describe it. What is a QT interval showing S1 and S2? These are heart sounds, lub and dub. Lub and dub, okay? So lub, dub, that's what you're listening to, right? Mm -hmm. So when you have the, the stethoscope in your ears and you're listening to someone's heart, you hear lub, dub, lub, dub, right? What does that sound relate to? What is Q? Let's put that into terms that we understand. What is Q is vasoventricular depolarization, which is actually the start of what? The start of what? What? Ventricular contraction. And what's occurring during ventricular contraction? What happens besides just the contraction? What has to occur? Papillary muscle has to contri contract. Chordae tendinae has to do what? Pull, pull tight, which causes the valves to close. So, <laughs> right? Yeah. Right? So we end up with a sound of love when ventricular those valves close. And this is semilunar valves when they close. Okay? So uh, love and duck. Two heart sounds that you should understand where they fit here because it relates to love duck. And you, the difference in sounds is love duck, which we'll listen and we'll listen to the heart and listen to our hearts in lab okay and then we'll listen what you're listening for is during that loved up period for changes things like if you've never heard a you don't have a um, uh, regurgitation or you know anything uh, leaking by their valves leaking valve or anything like that so a heart murmur is what it's called and trust me when you hear one for the first time you'll you'll know what it is it kind of squeaks most of the time
find youngsters will have can have one and they kind of grow out of it. Especially if they're children. children. Mm -hmm. Anyway, when you go to your your everyone everyone's had those physicals, right? And they have to go for sports and all that stuff, and they they do all the stuff and they put the heart the stethoscope on. So we're listening for those those regurgitation sounds, those murmurs, but it's kind of a screening way to see if there's maybe an issue with the heart that we need to follow up on. But uh, can we find cardiomegaly on charts just by doing stethoscopes? So it's the, the those are the basic things. Do, are you can you move all your joints? Can you can you do all that? Do you hear something obvious like a heart murmur? Um, anyway, okay. So this is um, <clears throat> this is that. How's that? Okay, we're done. Any questions about this?